me, okay? If you tell anyone about this, I would never pray that you haven't given it to me. What did your grandfather do to you? I mean, what is so terrible that you can't talk about it? What's it say in the book about Mum? I'm your Auntie Colleen. <laughs> what? I'm your big sister. Oh, goodness. Oh. I would have thought, after all these years. Can you make heads or tails of what Mum wrote? Yeah, well, I'm trying to. It's quite a story. Um, March the 3rd, 1948. I, Sarah Stewart, Nate Townsend, hereby state the following in the hope that finally the records can be set straight. I need a sherry. Maura, can you just get to the guts of it? For the sake of posterity, I formally acknowledge that my husband, Gordon Stewart, is the true and biological father of Colleen Hickey, born 1939. I'm illegitimate. I'm the child that dare not speak its name. Hang on a minute. Didn't Mum and Dad get married in 39? Well, it says. They were uncertain times. The men were heading off to war. Our wedding had been organised in a matter of days. But how did Colleen's mum come into all Can you let me finish? Everyone was living for the moment, which is why I eventually was able to forgive Gordon for his indiscretion with Mavis the very night before we said our vows. Gordon told Mavis he couldn't help with the baby. In desperation, she married Merv and allowed him to think the child was his. To Ruth? That would have knocked him around a bit. Well, she got over it. Um, I gradually began to feel sorry for Mavis and her plight. And when the war ended, I begged Gordon to rescue Colleen from her circumstances, but he refused, saying since Merv was in a bad way. Was he injured or dishonourably discharged? More like it. The scandal alone would have made life impossible for both families, so we remained silent. And when this time capsule is opened in 2048, anyone who could be hurt with the truth will be gone. But future generations will at least know that is all I have the courage to do. I apologise for any pain I caused by our own silence. Sarah Stewart. She obviously wasn't counting on an earthquake. Stern the flaming crows. We really are related. This really is quite a story. Do you mind if I take it home, Colleen? Colleen! It's all right, love. We're all pretty shocked. I'm not a hickey. I'm a steward. Oh, forget the sherry. Let's crack open some champagne. This calls for a family celebration. <sighs> Hey, Colleen. It's a bit late for you to be on the prowl, isn't it? I was hoping to find Leah. Uh, sorry, she left hours ago. Ah. Oh, she hasn't been answering a mobile. I've left three messages on her home phone. What's so important? I couldn't wait. Oh, well, um, something wonderful has happened. <laughs> but she probably wouldn't understand not being from around here. Try me. This has been the best night of my life. Well, the second best after winning Miss Groper. Back then I thought I was somebody special, but I didn't really realise how special I was. What are you going on about? I'm not Colleen Hickey. I'm not even Colleen Smart. Colleen Stewart! The time capsule has proven it. I am Alf and Morag's half-sister. What? How's that possible? Well, it's quite a yarn. You know, I'm surprised our parents never said a word. Well, if something wasn't fit for human consumption in that era, they just swept it under the carpet. So what happens now? Yeah, um, how do we handle it? 
<laughs> past is the past. Yeah, but how do we deal with Colleen now that she's our own flesh and blood? Well, given her level of enthusiasm, I say we treat her exactly the same as we always have. I mean, if this had happened 30 years ago, it might have been possible to welcome her into the bosom of the family. It's too late now. Yeah, well, what do we tell people? Oh, I'm quite happy to let Colleen make the explanations. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to lie as low as possible until this is all over. Well, if you're doing that, I'm going to hitch the van up to the ute and head for the bush. Now, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? No, I was thinking about doing it anyway once Sal left. This has just given me a bit of an extra nudge. Oh, yeah, great. You guys both duck for cover. Where does that leave me? <laughs> With Auntie Colleen. <laughs> it's hard to imagine nowadays, but back then the Stuarts were a family to be reckoned with. Owned all the land as far as the eye could see. So you knew them growing up? Oh, everybody knew the Stuarts. I used to watch them walking down the main street. Morag always wore the prettiest little ribbons in her hair. That's hard to imagine. I often wondered what it'd be like to be one of them. But I wasn't. I was born a hickey. I could never understand why my mother married Merv when he was so dreadful to her. Now I know. She had no other option. Tell me about Miss Groper. <laughs> oh, it was a magical evening. Of course, I didn't think I had a chance of winning Joy Fox and she was the one to beat. But then they announced my name and suddenly I... I felt the spotlight upon me and the applause. I'll never forget it. Standing on that stage, I felt as if life finally had something to offer me. The future looked so much rosier. I was somebody, much more than Merv Hickey's daughter. If only I'd known then who I really was. I'm sure your real dad was proud of you, even if you couldn't say it. Then it was all over. I kept waiting for life to fulfil its promise. It never did. All it offered was a father who drank himself into the grave and a husband who cheated. I sometimes wondered if life hadn't played a cruel trick on me, building me up just to me down again. Life has kept its promise tonight in time capsule. I suppose it has. <laughs> Alf and Morag will come round to the idea, won't they? Oh, of course. It's got to give it time to sink in. <laughs> well, I think we should have a toast. What do we drink to? It's too late to change the past. Uh, so we'll drink to the future. To you, Colleen Stewart. Colleen Stewart. <laughs>